what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be comparing richard the first and isong a now this is a question that i get all the time in live streams in the comments of my videos on my discord pretty much everybody is asking me should i be focusing on richard the first or isong a and I see a lot of other Rise of Kingdoms content creators get this question a ton. They get it in live streams, they get it in comments, it's, it's everywhere, right? And it's a great question. And the reason that this question is asked so much is because it doesn't have a straight answer. If it were obvious which one was better all the time, then people wouldn't ask the question, right? That's just, that's just by nature. Now, I know a lot of content creators have kind of come to the conclusion that Isong Ye is the best answer. And I think that that, that answer, um, it's not wrong. I think it's oversimplified and that's not a bad thing. Um, I think it's oversimplified for the fact that you just can't take the amount of time that it requires to answer that question thoroughly every single time that it's asked, right? It's, it's a, a question that has a lot to do with who you are as a player, how much power do you have, how heavily are you spending in the game, right? Like how many legendary commander sculptures are you getting? How old is your kingdom? Do you have either of them summoned? Do you have, have you already invested in one of them pretty heavily, right? Um, it's a, it's a question that really depends on the specific scenario that you, the player are in. And so when other content creators say, oh, it's Isong Ye, um, I think that what they mean is that in general, for most players, that is probably the best answer. Um, but again, it's a complex question and I kind of want to break it down a little bit more in this video. Now, um, starting from the very beginning, right? Um, Richard shows up on the wheel of fortune earlier than Isonge. So that is an advantage of choosing Richard because you can actually start to invest in him earlier. Whereas for Isong, you actually have to wait a little bit longer for him to show up on the wheel and you would have to save up sculptures during that time. And some people just don't have willpower. Let's be honest. Uh, the other thing we have to talk about is why is it these two, right? Like uh, of all the legendary commanders, why are we talking about Richard and Isong A? Why are we comparing those two? Is it because they're similar? Well, no, they're actually very different commanders. They do like pretty much the opposite things. If you really think about it, Richard is very tanky, right? He's very good at sustaining damage and not dying. He heals his troops. If he's garrisoning, he heals the garrison, which can get very dangerous, um, but it's still a thing that he does really well. He really only deals damage in the form of normal attack damage and counter attack damage that is buffed a little bit by this uh, second skill here. You get 10% extra counter attack damage. Um, it's, he's a full infantry commander. So yeah, I mean, he, he does some debuffing in terms of March speed, but he's a very tanky commander. A lot of times you don't see him get attacked in the open field because everybody knows that it just takes so long to take down a Richard. Is it even worth dealing with it on the battlefield? Right? The other commander we're looking at is, is Isong A, right? And he is not a tanky commander. He can also be used on the garrison, but his damage is going to come mostly from his skill damage because he has the best AOE in the game, right? He has a huge damage factor when he's expertised and it's in a circular area. And this, this fact that it's in a circular area when expertised is what makes his expertise so good. It's so good. That means what this means is that when you're in the open field, it doesn't matter what direction you're getting attacked from your AOE is going to hit everyone around you, not just in front of you in a fan shaped area. So Isong is dealing a ton of skill damage he's restoring rage um every 10 uh, there's a 10 percent chance of him restoring 100 rage and also doubling his archer attack he also gets a skill damage bonus of upwards of 50 percent so he is kind of in a way in opposites of of richard right and that's why people are debating which of them is the better one to focus on and the reason it's narrowed down to those two is because they show up so early on in the game and they're so dominant in the game for such a long time right even if you look at footage from season four of kvk which is the most recent season that we've seen um a ton of players pay to win players you know players with 100 200 million power or higher 
are still using Richard and Isong Ye um, in the open field, in garrisons, in rallies, right? Uh, it's just they're such good commanders for so long. Whereas if you look at somebody like, for example, Julius Caesar, he's very good in the early game, especially in um, like season one of KVK. If you're going to launch rallies like Caesar's great. And don't get me wrong, you, you do still see a Julius Caesar once in a while in the later game, um, but his his usefulness dies off as you get better commanders that show up in the game, right? Um, you're still you're more likely to see an Attila Takeda ra rally than a Julius Caesar rally because that's just a better choice in 95 or 99 percent of the scenarios so the fact the, the reason that the question is Richard Isong is because they're both such good commanders and you get them so early on and they're gonna be so useful for so long that it's a good investment right you're gonna get a lot of value out of using your legendary commander sculptures on one of those two choices rather than somebody like maybe Cao Cao or again Julius Caesar or maybe even Frederick right there's a ton of other commanders that you could be investing in but those are the two that the community at large has pretty much determined are going to be your best bang for your buck so far we've talked about what each of these commanders does best and we've talked about why are these two some of the most dominant commanders in the game because right like I said they're so good right they're just so good at what they do so let's go back to the question should you invest in Richard the first or Yi Song Ye? Well, the first thing that, that I want to ask is which do you actually like better and which suits your gameplay style, right? Again, they're, they play very differently. They're different commanders. Um, you're not going to deal that much damage with Richard, right? Maybe you could pair him with Alex later down the line. And Alex does have even more tankiness with this direct damage factor, um, which is really nice. It's a 10% chance, but it's a huge piece of, it's a huge damage factor, which is awesome. Um, there are other commanders that you could pair Richard with to kind of compensate for the fact that he's not dealing that much damage. Um, but for the most part, you're not going to be dealing that much damage with him, but he's very tanky. So if that's, uh, if that fits your play, style if that's an attractive play style to you um i think richard would be a good option right again you know you could statistically determine which one is better given the multiple number of scenarios you're going to be using them for but at the end of the day you know if this if if your play style fits one or the other much more then you're gonna have a better time playing with those commanders the other one is isong do you want to go in the open field and you know you're gonna to have to be okay with probably taking a lot of damage right because People, when they see an Esong, they target it in the open field because it's such a a it deal if you don't address it early it will deal it will chip away at many armies in the open field over time so the longer that Isong stays in a group fight in the open field the more value that player is going to get out of him and so a lot of times you know you'll see a Sun Tzu Isong A or something along those lines and Isong gets targeted very early in the open field because people know that the sooner we we handle this Isong, the more we can focus on other single target glass cannons like um, Genghis Khan or Minamoto, right? Other other commanders that deal crazy DPS, but to only one target. So, you know, do you want to be the guy who's dealing massive AOE with the risk of being targeted and being swarmed down really fast? You know, that's that's something that you have to consider. They're two different play styles. Now, assuming you don't really care about the play style, right? Like, let's just assume you just want to know what which one is better right let's say you don't have a preference in gameplay style you don't really care you just are here to know which one's better well if you're going to expertise one of these two commanders and keep in mind to expertise one of these commanders it will take a total of 690 sculptures to get them to that expertise level right 690 legendary commander sculptures is a massive investment free-to-play players will take months right months to get these legendary commander sculptures and that's if they are participating in tons of events if they're in a um if they're in an alliance that's making a ton of purchases and they can kind of and that fluffs up their vip level close to vip 10 or at least close enough for them to gem it the rest of the way with gems that they get from gathering and from um you know from killing barbarians and doing events right it's very hard for a free-to-play player to expertise a legendary commander right like you have to really be 
playing the long game and um you have to really be uh you have to have great willpower because you're gonna have to you have to gonna you're going to have to um save up these sculptures for so long and only ever dedicate them to one of these commanders for months right and so it it enters this scenario where you know if we talk about which one is better at expertise um you know i would say probably isong ye i would say isong is probably better when he's expertise because his expertise turns him into a different commander right like you know his damage factor goes up by a decent amount and he his his aoe changes from a forward facing fan to a circular area which is just crazy like there's no other commander that really does that at least not with that high of a damage factor right like it, it's nuts and you know the other thing to consider is you know what are the odds that lilith releases a commander in the future that is better than Esong at what Esong does meaning are they going to release another aoe commander like Esong with a circular area that's even stronger than him right like i can't imagine that i mean maybe they could um but that would be some crazy power power creep right and if they do how much better is that commander going to be right because if it's if it's only a little bit better well then your investment in Esong is still a good investment so i think if you're going to expertise either Esong or Richard, I think Esong is probably better when expertise than Richard is expertise. Because again, if you look at Richard's expertise, all that it does is reduces damage taken by 5%, which is good, right? But if you look at um, his second skill, this is already reducing it by 15%. So an extra 5% is, is minor. Um, and it increases damage dealt to cavalry units by infantry units by 2%, which... That's not that big of a deal. And then every 10 seconds, you're decreasing the target march speed by 50% for five seconds. Now that's cool, but the problem is that Richard is so slow that you're, it's not like you're gonna be able to use this skill to, you know, to um, catch, you're not gonna catch up to an enemy with Richard and slow them with this skill. You know what I mean? Um, you kind of have to already be on top of them for this to really work. So his expertise is, is nice, but it's not a game changer like song Ye's is and so if you're considering who should i put 690 legendary commander sculptures into i think Song is going to be a better option than richard and you know i know that i have richard expertise and i don't have Song expertise and the reason for that and this will lead me into my next point is that when i first started investing in these commanders i didn't think you know i didn't have such a long-term vision i didn't think oh what about a year and a half from now because I just played this game casually for fun with a couple of my coworkers, right? And so when I thought, well, which one should I invest in? I just figured, well, I'll invest in one that's going to get some payoff earlier on. And that leads me to my next point of which one is better at 5511, right? And I think that, you know, this is a decent question to ask because getting a legendary to 5511 requires 190 legendary legendary commander sculptures and that's still a lot right that's still a lot of legendary commander sculptures but to take them from 5511 to expertise you need 500 more legendary commander sculptures so if we're talking about 5511 i think richard is a better option and the reason for that is because his healing factor is unique. You don't have any other commanders in the epic tier, right? Which if you're a low spender or a free to play player, that's who you're comparing to. You're really, you're comparing to epics. Um, there's no other epic commander in, in this tier that does this huge healing factor and reduces damage taken by such an, a large amount. Plus you also get another damage taken reduction. Um, with his second skill as a passive right you're also getting 10 percent of infantry stats and you're increasing your healing and fan uh, enhancement your healing effect enhancement by 10 percent so you know it it at 5511 he's still a very good commander now this third skill i think is better than his fourth one so in a perfect world you would actually get him 5551 um but you know if you're gonna do that you might as well take him all the way and then you know if you're looking at that well then it's like well you should really be asking the question which one should you expertise and we already answered that with esong so if you're only going to take him to 5511 i think richard's better and and again 
I, I explained why I think he's better, but let let's look at Esong at 5511, right? You've got a nice fan-shaped AoE, right? No doubt about that. 1400 damage factor is great. You can hit five targets. You also get a 10% chance of generating a hundred rage and um doubling your archer's attack by uh, uh by a hundred percent you're doubling the archer attack by th for three seconds right um and that's crazy right that's really good this second skill doesn't really matter too much and then the third skill at one gives you 20 percent skill damage bonus which is actually the same as the fourth skill on sun tzu when he has five skill points in it so really what you have when you have an esong 5511 is you have a you essentially have a Sun Tzu that deals a little bit more AOE, but generates a little bit less rage, right? And of course it buffs archers pretty significantly when you have that buff going on, but you can essentially see it as a modified version of Sun Tzu. That's just a little bit better, right? He's a little bit better. Sun Tzu only gives infantry 10% health, whereas Esong gives um, your archers a 10% chance to double attack for three seconds. I think that's better, right? I think that's better. Um, and you know, your AOE is better, right? It's just, it's a better AOE. But again, if you look at Sun Tzu, um, he is, you know, maybe he doesn't have as high of a damage factor, but he has the chance of regenerating 250 rage every time his skill goes off, which is nice. He also reduces damage taken by 10%. So that damage reduction is not something that Isong Ye has. So when you're looking at these two, a 5511 Isong Ye is very similar to a Sun Tzu. Um, it's a little bit better. Again, it does deal a little bit more damage, of course, right? Um, but you know it's still comparable and like i said there's nothing in the epic tier that's comparable um in my opinion to a 5511 richard so if you're going to only take them to 5511 um and you know you're comfortable with, le with leaving them there i would take richard to 5511 now the next question is um you could technically get richard and esong to 5511 for less sculptures than it would take to expertise a single one of them right um to expertise one of them is 690 sculptures whereas if you um get both of them to 5511 it's 380 sculptures which is still way less right it's way less um and so this is a valid point right should you get them both to 5511 and you know it's it, it's not it's not a bad thing but if you are looking at where should I invest 380 legendary commander sculptures, I think that enters the realm of, you know, uh, the mindset where you should probably consider just going for that expertise, right? Because you're, you're already more than halfway there. Um, you might as well just max out one of them and really focus on that one um, and get that expertise and then start to look at who you should do next. And you know spoiler it's probably whichever one you didn't pick first right i picked richard the first first and now i'm focusing on esong so i don't think you should take them both to 5511 um again it's it's it wouldn't be the end of the world right you would have two decent armies with with these two um but i think that again if you're looking at investing 380 legendary commander sculptures i think you should put them all into one of them and and push for that expertise right that's what i think you should do um it's gonna take again it's gonna take a long time it's gonna take a really long time and so that's when you have to decide you know are you really going to take the time and effort and, and have the willpower to get them to expertise if you are i think you should do isong Ye. if you're not i would say get richard to 5511 and then from there just whatever you want to do if you got Esong Ye to 5511 and now you're you're listening to me say get Richard to 5511 because he's better I would say forget that just bring Esong all the way right just bring Esong all the way you already have him at 5511 and that's the, the, the final point I kind of want to talk about is you know again a lot of content creators and even myself I'm guilt, guilty of this saying you know just go for Esong just go for Esong um you know I think it depends right if you are asking that question but you already have a 5511 Richard then you know maybe you want to consider just bringing richard all the way right even though isong is probably a better choice at expertise you know you have to realistically look at your um sunk cost right you've already invested so much into richard you could just go all the way and have a mega tanky army and i don't think that that would be a bad thing right i don't think having an expertise is uh, richard is a bad thing right and, it, and you may come to find that once you have an, an expertise richard you may come to find at that point that 
you're really enjoying the game and you're going to keep playing for a while and at that point then you can work on esong right and vice versa you may have already started to invest in esong and if you have probably just bring him all the way probably just bring him all the way to expertise right but again at the end of the day you know no matter where you are in your commander setup i think it's important that you understand what each of these commanders does what value they bring and what they bring to the table um i think it's important that you understand why players are are so um uh, are using both of these commanders for for so long and so often right why do they have such heavy usage hopefully i've clarified that for you in this video um i do think that no matter what level of spender you are i think these two commanders should be the first two that you expertise um in my opinion now you know there there is the the discussion of alex the great right alex the great is an insanely good commander um he's insanely good right but the problem with alex is that for new players if you start in a new kingdom you have to wait like 220 days or something like that 215 days before he shows up on a wheel right and so what are you going to do for you know that's more than half a year right that's more than half a year what are you going to do just sit around and, and just hoard all your legendaries i mean if you have the willpower and you, you want to do it then yeah i mean you could maybe go for alexander the great instead of either of the other options but again i think that you should be um focusing on richard and esong if you're gonna expertise one go for esong if you don't think that you're gonna play this game very seriously and you're not gonna be getting a ton of universal legendaries and you kind of just want to toy around with one of them i would bring richard to 5511 now i know that again this wasn't a clear-cut answer right I, I don't think this was a very clear-cut answer because it it really depends on on you right it depends on what commanders do you already have like if you already have a martel expertise somehow then yeah certainly you should probably be going for esong because you already have a really tanky legendary infantry a commander that you can use so again it is it is is up to you right it's up to you the player to make that decision and that's why in this video i wanted to not just give you the answer right i don't want to just spoon spoon feed you an answer i want to go over the pros and cons of each and the scenarios with which you may want to expertise one or the other um and you know it's it's up to you but again um no matter what level of spender you are i think one of these two should probably be the first uh these two should probably be the first two that you're expertise if you're going to be expertising legendaries um these two should be the first two besides ethel fled obviously and of course you know minamoto and barca don't count because you could just straight up buy them but in terms of converting universals i think that esong and Richard are your two best options um alexander is another really great commander that is definitely in the discussion right he's definitely in the discussion um but i haven't done enough testing to really say too much and again he shows up in the game much later than um richard and esong so hopefully this video helped you guys hopefully it clarified things for you so you can kind of make the decision of which one should you be investing in um again hopefully you understand it and now you're equipped with the information to know which of them is going to be the best to invest in for you specifically not just a blanket spoon fed answer guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really does help out the channel a ton i'll give you guys two seconds to do it just go ahead and do it, it you, you did it you, you're gone okay cool you, you did it awesome thank you so much for that i really appreciate that subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a new video to youtube all my social media links are in the description below you'll find my discord where you can come and ask me questions about the game and it will also notify you anytime i go live my twitch is also in the description below i usually stream rise of kingdoms at least once or twice a week so make sure you drop down there and follow me on twitch as well and again all my other social medias are down there uh, in the description comment down below if you have any questions about richard or esong or legendary commanders or whatever the case is um i will try to answer everybody's questions down in the comments section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace